etefu assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh musum fu yuti ada wani enue nyina be wo so e be ka ben insha allah pa pa turu pa pa sembala ko dom insha allah um tag pastor obed pastor obed tag pastor obed the reason why i'm doing this video is pastor obed had the guts to disrespect the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by calling him names and after calling him names and also lying to his congregation that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has to embrace christianity before he died and uh, he he brought a lot of verses to uh, prove his claims where we will be dealing with those uh, with this video in about three series and today being the first episode i would like you to tag him share the video to reach him inshallah may allah azza wa jalla reward and bless each and everyone tagging and sharing this video to mankind in the end another was so Ebekabe is the slogan, inshallah. For your information, if you're here for the first time, we are treating the Jesus of the Quran. Yeah. Pastor Obed, uh, in his intelligence, is trying to preach to his people, Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, of the Quran to uh, Muslims and his congregation. Uh, you should keep in note that most of his videos that he's been doing Whereby he's been calling Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wasalam a Muslim and other stuff like that. I was even correcting him lot and lot and lot over his shortcomings. And in this video too, we shall correct him over his uh, shortcomings. Like I said, uh, some people know the truth, but they keep on hiding it. You understand? As the Quran chapter number 3, verse number 78, uh, made it clearly in the Quran that uh, there are some people who allow Azza wa Jalla among the Christians and the Jews are some people who know the truth. What do they do? They speak as if it is in the Quran. And indeed, there are among them a party who utter the scripture eh, with their tongues. So you may think it is from the scripture. What this pastor is about to say, you might think it is from the Quran, but it's never true. But it is never true. It is not from the Quran. And they lie that it is Allah who said so in the Quran. And it is not from Allah. Allah never said that. They lie and they speak on truth about Allah. While they know. Among is Pastor Obed, who has come to know the truth, but he is trying anything possible to submerge his people into delusion and into lies. And today, we shall bring him on top and then treat him as it's supposed to be. In the end, you know, so, when you are here, share the video, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, follow us on all the platforms, inshallah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla reward and bless you. Untold truth Islamic Dawa, UTI Dawa. In the end, you know, so, Ebekaben. And we are using the Quran as a witness to Muslims, reaching out to them to make faith. Jesus Christ. So the first question is, who are those who are following Jesus Christ, alayhi salatu wasalam? Who are those people? We need to find those people first before we attribute them to any religion. You understand me? According to Quran chapter number 3, verse 152, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, But when Jesus felt persistent in disbelief from them, Kala, he said, Man ansari illallah. Who are my supporters for the cause of Allah? The disciples said, We are the supporters of Allah. We believe in Allah. And testify that we are Muslims. To him we submit. So those who followed Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, were all Muslims. According to the Quran, they were Muslims. So if they have mercy in their heart, it is referring to the Muslims at the time of Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wasalam. As it, as it is mentioned in Quran chapter number 3, verse number, um, verse number 84, 4, where it says, Kul amanna billahi, say we believe in Allah. We believe in Allah. Wa ma unzila alayna, and in what was revealed to us. Wa ma unzila ala Ibrahima, and what was uh, revealed to Abraham, wa Ismaila, and Ishmael, wa Ishaq, and uh, who? Isaac, wa Yaqub, and Jacob, wa Asbat, and Jacob's 12 sons. Wa ma uti ya Musa, 
and what was given to Moses alayhi salatu wa salam wa Isa and Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wa salam wa nabiyuna min rabbihim and what was given to the prophet that came from the Lord la nufarriqu bayna ahdin minhum we don't set distinction or we don't make distinction between this prophet wa nahnu lahu muslimun we and this prophet are all muslims so if Jesus is a Muslim and the entire prophets of the Quran are Muslims and he says those who follow Jesus are, are mercy at heart, it means the Muslims are mercy in the heart. It is never referring to any Christian. Stop your lies. Stop these lies. In the end, we are here to expose people like you who come around to lie to mankind when you know the truth already. You've proven that he is a Muslim. Now you want to twist and turn things around because you have some dimwit following you. We will come out to expose you each and every time. I am around. In as much as we are alive, inshallah, we will always come after you people. I see. We spoke about Jesus as what? Mercy. And as a great sacrifice. And the Quran says that those who follow Jesus, they have this mercy in their heart. When you see someone lying and people applauding him, in the uh, congregation, they should tell you that um, in the city of the blind, the one eye becomes the king, indeed. Uh, I feel so disappointed in the congregation because a lot of you people are sitting there and this uh, noble man keeps on lying to you and you accept. The death of Rasulullah has been an issue to Christians at a point he was killed by poison at a point, uh, his wife killed him. At a point, a lot of information is around. Meanwhile, the Muslims have their authentic sources over there. Now he is lying that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, before he died, he embraced Christianity. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran narrates the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't have to come out and lie. The Prophet was informed of his death year before he died. Why he says in Surah Al-Nasr, When the victory of Allah has come and the conquest, and you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in a multitude, then exalt Allah with the praise of your Lord and then ask for forgiveness. Istighfari bil ibada over here. It is not istighfar bil zamb. No, it is istighfar bil ibada. Asking for forgiveness in the, in the form of worship. In Islam, saying astaghfirullah, God forgive me, is part of worship. You do not have to sin before you say, um, God should forgive you your sin. No. And now, Kena Tawaba, uh, indeed, he is ever accepting of uh, repentance. Now, what, what has this verse gotten to do with the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You ask Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhu about this and the companions were asked about it and Ibn Abbas had to tell them that this is informing them about the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this was informed also by Sayyidah Aisha and other companions which all accept that this is the chapter which was informing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about um, his death. And uh, when his death came near, you can read in Quran chapter number um, 17, 17. Surah Al-Isra, verse number 78, what the prophet was doing. Why must you always come out and lie? As a Christian, do you eat lies? Do you eat lies? In Quran chapter number uh, 17, uh, let's go to 79, where it says, Women are and And from part of the night, pray with it additional worship for you. It is expected that your Lord will resurrect you to the prayer station, which is refer uh, referring to Makam and Mahmouda, where the entire prophet wished to go or wished to reach such rank, but it wasn't given to any of them by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, on the day of judgment, we'll go to Moses to save us. He will say, uh, we'll go to Adam. Adam will say, go to Abraham. It's a long story. Adam will say, go to Noah. Noah will say, go to Abraham. Abraham will say, go to Moses. Moses will say, go to Jesus. Jesus will say, go to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where we say analaha, analaha. Um, it's a long story. So um, this, we are doing comparative religion. We're not doing the entire detail. So this was what the prophet was doing every night when his time was near. He never embraced Christianity. It's a lie. It's a concoction. It's a fabrication, interpolation, evil at the heart of the Christians. 
And Pastor Obed, I challenge you on this topic. I challenge you on this topic. If you are ready, we can meet one-on-one -on, -one on a dialogue on this topic. And you will bow to greatness. And one or something that we, we, we saw with Mohammed. That before he died, he surrendered to Jesus. Oh. Alaji Muhammad gave his life to Jesus. The disrespect by calling him Alaji Muhammad gave his life to Jesus. Alaji Muhammad, instead of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's an act of disrespect to the Prophet, inshallah. Being Alaji is no insult. But you and I know it's a mockery, it's a way of mockery. And we can also mock uh, you, or uh, we can also mock your messengers and prophets in the Bible. But guess what? They are our messengers. We don't mock them, we love them. Land of Arekubaina Hedin Minhum. We should say to you that we believe in Allah Azza wa Jalla, and which was sent down unto us, which is Rasulullah Sallam and the Quran, and that which was given to Abraham, wa Ismail, and Ishmael, wa Ishaq, and Isaac, wa Yaqub, and Jacob, wa Lasbati, and the twelve sons of Jacob, wa Ma'uti Ya Musa, and that was which was given to Moses, wa Isa, and Jesus, wa Ma'uti Ya Nabi Yunamin Rabbihim, and that which was given to the Prophet who came from. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla. La no farreko bayna hadi minhum. We don't set extensions among them. We don't make decisions among them. When any law Muslim own, we and them are all Muslim. So we don't mock prophets of God. I dare you. It, it will be difficult. In thousand percent, you might have 0.00001 percent talking rubbish about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any messenger of God. It will mean that the person is even ignorant of his own religion. In Islam, we believe in all those uh, prophets. Amana Rasulu, the man was lay he men rob behi, while moment in a cool and amana be la, or malakatihi, or could be he, or Rosolihi, a land of Farrecobena had him in Rosolihi. We don't make distinctions uh, on the uh, uh, with regards to the Prophet. Amana Rasulu, believe in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu has believed in Allah Azza wa Jalla. The man was lay lay, which Allah Azza wa Jalla has, has given it to him. Eh? Uh, while Mu'minun, and the believers also, also believe in the Messenger and Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, uh, we believe in the books. We believe in the messengers. Uh, we don't say we love this messenger. We don't love that messenger. So from your argument, if because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam believed in Jesus and he became a Christian, yet now he believed in David. Is he a Christian? Is he a David? He believed in Joshua. Is he uh, uh, jo Joshua? He believed in Moses. He spoke about Moses more than um, Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wasalam, because Moses was mentioned 136 times in the Quran. Will you say that he is a, a Judean? Eh? Now, Prophet Muhammad sallam is a Judean, a Mosaic follower. Your argument is so weak, so weak, so, so weak. You need to sit down and learn, at least as a teacher who is leading uh, thousands of people, who is, who is being inspired by people around. It, you owe it to yourself to at least read. Read. And to us before dangerous how many of you saw it you saw that he gave his life to you. Hushed, not what a pity if you are following such a man another um lies and fabrication the life of the prophet is no secret and it is no pity following the messenger of allah but it is equally pity if you are a Ghanaian and you are following jesus christ Alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israelite. Matthew 15, verse number 24. And even when he was sending his disciples in Matthew 10, verse number 5, to says he sent them only to the lost sheep of Israelite. And it was Apostle Paul who came to lie to you that he has been sent unto you. You understand me? With all due respect, not to disrespect him. But he came to tell you that Christ sent him unto you. And we are calling him a liar because Christ said, well, if you go, if anybody comes after him and says he has met Christ, we shouldn't believe in him. According to Matthew chapter number 23, verse number 20, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 23 to 27. Now, so let's put that, that, that aside. So following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is no pity. And his life is a dictionary on its own. Everything he did, even including his wives, was written down. Everything. The companions were in his house 247. 247, especially the Aswebu Sifa. They were in his house 247, like Bilal, like Amar, and so forth and so on. They were in his house 247. There is no way he embraced any Christianity. It's a lie. It's a lie. 
He never did anything in secret. He worked with his companions. They did everything together. And he never hide anything from the companions. You are a liar. And, uh, uh, and we don't expect anything much from you other than lies. Because the Quran says, What that it is for to me now, Hadil Kitab. La yudulu nakum. Wa ma yudulu illa anfusahum wa ma yashurun. The Christians eh, want to mislead the Muslims. They want to lie to them. But they cannot never mislead the Muslims. They will end up misleading themselves. After you found the truth, there you go lying to your people and, and, and proclaiming lies. We want, like I said, if you think you know Islam and have read Islam, I'm giving you the challenge. Accept it and let's do this. Let's get this done once and for all and you'll see. Let me explain to you how come this man gave his life to Jesus secretly. Surah 33, the verse 37. Every learned Muslim, every learned Muslim knows your head is empty with all due respect. And he also knows that you've never studied Islam and you are talking uh, out of lies, hate, fabrications, interpolations, adulterations, massaging and maligning the scriptures to suit your greed and your Christian agenda. Every Muslim knows this. Every learned Muslim knows you are playing with your own intelligence. You've never studied anything. Every Muslim's heart is opened. The Muslim has opened his heart already. And no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, alayhi salatu wasalam. No Muslim is a Muslim if he doubts a single miracle of Jesus Christ, alayhi salatu wasalam. We Muslims believe that he was born miraculously. We Muslims believe he, uh, he performed miracles by the, by the leave of Allah, azza wa jalla, or by the power of Allah, azza wa jalla. We, we believe that he gave life to the dead by the leave of Allah, azza wa jalla. We, we believe he gave uh, an eye to the blind by the power of Allah Azza wa Jalla. We believe he healed the leper. We believe he healed, he, uh, uh, he healed a lot of people by the power of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, but we know that he is not God. And we know that he was sent to preach to the people of Israel. According to Quran, chapter number 61, verse number 6, where he says, uh, where he's called an answer, uh, um, where he's called an answer, Ibn Maryam, Ya Bani Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Where is Kala in Sabun Maryam? Remember when Jesus Christ, son of Mary, said, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Oh, people of Israel. Yabani Israela, people of Israel. Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. I'm a messenger sent unto you. Mosadik al Mabani Yadeya. Confirming what was given before me. Or what came before me. Eh? Um, Mina Taurati. That's the Atawra. Atawra, the, the, the laws given to Moses, alayhi salatu salam. Wa mubashiram bi rasulin, yaati min badi ismu Ahmed. And when he's going, he's also giving us a glad tidings of a messenger whose name will be Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Falama ja'ahum bil bajinat. And when the messenger came with the clear proofs and signs and wonders, kolu haza sihiru mubin, the Christian said, the Jews said, this is a clear, this is a clear magic. That was what uh, the Christians said. So we know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger of Allah. We believe, we know, and we are sure of it. And we know he never embraced any Christianity. And we know that you are lying and deceiving your people. The Muslims know all this already. And the Muslims know that Jesus Christ Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is a messenger of God sent to the people of Israelite, not to the entire world. So you who, uh, who lives in Ghana, who is a corner, Abradi, you go, Eh, Mampusi, Dagomba, Sisala are all following delusion because he wasn't sent for you. The one sent to the whole of mankind is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As mentioned in the Quran, chapter number 21, verse 106 to 107, Wa marasalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. In the Quran 33, verse number 40, where it says that, Makan Muhammadun aba ahadin min rajalikum walakin rasulallahi wa khataman nabiyin. And that one too is also there. Uh, and a lot of verses in Quran 7 verse 157, Quran 7 verse 158. We can go on and on and on to be bringing you these verses. So we know this already, that Christ is a Muslim. According to Quran 42 verse number 13, uh, all of these verses are there. So we know this, you are not to teach us, inshallah. Yet to us all. And if you're a Muslim and you're listening to me in this meeting, I'd like for you to open your heart. Where we've come from and what we are dealing with now. By this time, you should be convinced.
to want to give your life to Jesus if you have not done so. Over the Muslim does not give his life to Jesus. The Muslim gives his life to God, the God that sent Jesus, the God that created Jesus, the God whom Jesus Christ, alayhi salatu wasalam, is worshiping. According to Matthew chapter number 27, verse 4, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Matthew 26, verse number 36 39, Christ was worshiping God. In Luke 22, verse number 41 to 44, Christ was worshiping God. In Luke 6, verse number 12, he was worshiping God. In Matthew 17, verse 5 to 7, he was worshiping God. In Mark 1, verse 30, 35 to 37, he was worshiping God. So Christ worshiped and served God. He believed in God. We don't worship Jesus. We worship God. In John 17, verse number 3 to 4. For this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God. And he says, Christ, whom thou hast sent. So Christ worshiped God. Why do we have to give our life to Jesus when Christ was calling you to give your life to God? In Quran, chapter 5, where he says, Lakot kafara ladhina kolu, inna allaha huwa al-masihu bun mariam, wa kawad al-masih, ya bani Israel, i'budu Allah, rabbi wa rabbakum, inna wa mani shiruk billah, faqad herram allahu alayhi li janna, wa ma wahu nar, wa ma li zwali mina min ansuar. La ilaha illa Allah. Where he says, Lakot kafara ladhina kolu, they have certainly disbelieved. Eh? Those who say, In Allah, who will Messiah who will marry him? Allah Azza wa Jalla is the Messiah, son of Mary. O call him Messiah, but the Messiah, son of Mary, said, Ya bani Israel, O people of Israel, and O Bodo Allah, worship Allah, Rabbi, my Lord, what a bakum, your Lord, and now who man you share the kibla? Eh? Indeed, he who ever associate partners with Allah, for God herram Allah wa lehi le janna, heaven or paradise will be forbidden unto him. He shall live in the hellfire, or the hellfire will be his refuge forever. And there are no, not helpers for the wrongdoers. So we know these verses already, uh, and we don't follow these uh, illusions. Uh -huh. Get that at the back of your school. 33rd chapter, 37th verse. Want us to read the verse 37. And it You'll be amazed what the Quran has to say about this Muhammad. So we are about to go to the 33rd chapter and at verse 37. For us to be amazed of what the Quran has to say about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And don't forget, we shall also read 7th John, John chapter 7, uh, the 7th chapter in the Bible. And we'll be amazed of what the Bible has to say about this man, Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wasalam. Um, so let's listen to the pastor and then come, inshallah. And when thou sayest unto him on whom Allah hath conferred favor, and thou hast conferred favor, keep thy wife to thyself and fear Allah. And thou didst hide in thy mind that which Allah was to bring to light. Very important. You hid it in your mind. What Allah wanted to bring to light. This man, we, we have to be very careful with him because he knew lots of things that he hid. Things that Allah wanted him to bring to light, he hid it. It's right here in the Bible. Hey, right here in the Quran. It makes such a person dangerous. A messenger of Allah who hides things that God wants to bring to light. <laughs> now, obviously, one will have to um, forgive Pastor Obed for his ignorance because um, his condition is like uh, someone who never studied uh, medicine work before, but then uh, took a contract or signed a contract to build a mansion. You obviously see that he might try to lay the block, but when he lays the block, either the house will uh, break down, the mansion will all collapse, or everybody who is passing by will see that these blocks are not properly laid so that's the situation with pastor obed right now the city of the blind one eye becomes the king he does not understand the exegesis of the quran the ahadith of the quran the commentaries behind the quran or even have the understandings of the luga the nahu behind the quran the balaga um you let's hold it like that and move on when the Quran says, "Waistakulu lil ladi an am Allahu alayhi wa an am ta alayhi amsek alayke," and remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one whom Allah has bestowed favor, and you bestowed favor, 
What is the Quran referring to? Wa an amta alayhi. That is, over here, Allah was rebuking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the story of Zaid and Zainab in this. I would love to treat this very, very well so that you and I will all understand this story. Allah tells what his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to his freed slave, Zaid ibn Haritha. One would say, did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa have slaves? He had, before you are manumitted, in the law of slavery, before you are manumitted, you have to, you have to buy the slave and then give him his freedom. So he gave him his freedom, Radhi Allah ta'ala anhu, who was the one whom Allah had bestowed grace. grace. So it was referring to the grace which Allah bestowed on Zaidu, uh, Zaid. Such through Islam and uh, such as through Islam and then following his messenger. That's uh, God giving him Islam and following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the grace itself. So when you, once you don't have Islam and you don't follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you have no grace. You, you, have no, you have no grace. You are only, have the, you are only having uh, the Rahmaniyah, but you are not having the Rahimiyah. Now, and you have done a favor to him. Uh, which favor? Means by freeing him from slavery. And he was a great leader, held in a high esteem and beloved by the Prophet ﷺ. He was known as the beloved. And his son, Usama, was known as the beloved son of the beloved. La ilaha illallah. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, The Messenger of Allah never sent him on a campaign, but he appointed him as its commander. And if he had lived after him, he would have appointed him as his Khalifa. La ilaha illallah. This was recorded by Imam Ahmed. The Messenger of Allah had given him in marriage to the daughter of his paternal aunt, Sayyida. Zainab bint Jash al Sadiya, me radiallahu ta'ala anha, whose mother was Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. Now, I always say, had the Prophet had interest in uh, Zainab, he would have married Zainab before Zainab because uh, she was his um, paternal aunt's daughter. So, and she grew in his house together with, the Rasul, together with the prophet. So he has seen her grown up. If he wanted her, he would have married her. But he gave her to who? To uh, Zaid. For her dowry, he gave her 10 dinars, 60 dirhams, a veil, a cloak, and a shirt, 50 marks of, uh, of food, and then 10 marks of dates. This was stated by Mokatil Bin Hayyan. She stayed with him for a year, more or less. Then problems arose between them. Zaid complained her to the Messenger وسلم, who told him, stay with your wife and have taqwa of Allah. By then, Allah had already revealed to the Prophet that he has married uh, Zainab to Rasulullah So one will ask, what uh, was Rasulullah hiding from humanity? Was it word of Allah? No, it wasn't the Quran. The Quran was uh, revealed for him to reveal it to humanity. He wasn't hiding a single verse from the Quran. No, he never did so. Uh, that's why Allah was jealous, says, Walau takawwala bad al akawil. He never hide a single verse in the Quran. Watufi fi nafsike ma Allahu mubdihi wa tashan nasa walau ahakka an takshahu. But you did hide in yourself. That which will make manifest. What was he hiding? That will make that which Allah will make uh, manifest. You did fear the people, whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him. What was he fearing? Ibn Jarir narrated that I Sharadilla Tala and her said, if Muhammad were to have concealed anything that was revealed to him of the book of Allah, he would have concealed this ayah. So this verse itself. If the Rasulullah was hiding anything from the verses of the Quran, he wouldn't have even brought this, this verse out at all. You mistake. You mistakenly understood, misunderstood the Prophet. So what was it? What was he hiding? It was because Allah has married uh, Zainab to him. And he's thinking about, look, this is marriage. It's his uh, private life. It is not 
a verse to be revealed to people. It is his private life. So he chooses to keep it quiet. Okay, let me keep quiet. I don't have to say this because if I say this, people will insult me. And that was what Allah was saying that he shouldn't have kept it quiet. He had married her to him. But there was a divorce between Zaid and Zainab. And she was there. He Rasulullah had to marry her. Allah has married her unto him. But he wasn't going, going in. He, he remained because he don't want people to insult him. That was it. It wasn't the verses of the Quran that he was hiding that you say he, he was a dangerous man. May Allah Azza wa Jalla forgive you and your, may he enlighten your intelligence. فَلَمَّا قَدَا زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطَرَى زَوَّجْنَكِهَا So when Zaid had completed his aim with her, that is, we gave her to you in marriage. Meaning, when her marriage to Zaid was over, he had separated from her, we married her to you. One will say, why will he marry his adopted son? In Islam, there is no adopted sons. Some lives were practiced back then. Islam came to abolish those practices. So in Islam, you can marry your paternal aunt's daughter. You can also, uh, uh, if you've ever kept someone as a maid or a slave or adopted son in your house, and he marries a woman and divorces her, you can marry such a woman because there is a divorce. It is not your own blood. Zed was over and separated from her. We married her to you. And the one who was her wali guardian in this marriage was Allah himself. It was Allah himself who married her unto him. In the sense that he revealed to the prophet that he should go in unto her without any wali. He should go and marry the, uh, he should go and stay with her as his wife. He does not need any marital, uh, any, any customary right to come and sit down and, and uh, perform any marital right before the, the contract of the agreement of the marriage. Now, contract agreement, dowry or witness among mankind. Imam Ahmed bin Hamba uh, uh, recorded that Thabit said that Anas, Radhi Ta'ala Anhu, uh, said, when Zainab, Zainab's idda finished, may Allah be pleased with her. Uh, the messenger of Allah said to Zaid bin Harif, Izhab, Fazkurha Aliya, go to her and tell her about me. I want to marry her. Now, that was what he was hiding until this verse was revealed. So it, it wasn't that he was hiding uh, the Quran verses or concealing the life, his life, and trying to embrace Jesus Christ secretly, and then no one knew. This is a lie. You are lying. The stories are there. Why will you come out and lie as noble man as you are? So, uh, so he, uh, Zaid, went to her and found her uh, needing dough. He, he, Zaid, said, when I saw her, I felt such respect for her that I could not even look at her and tell her what the messenger of Allah had said. So I turned my back to her and stepped aside and said, Oh, Zainab, rejoice, for the messenger of Allah has sent me to propose, to propose marriage to you on his behalf. She said, I will not do anything until I pray to my Lord. May uh, he be glorified. So she went to the place where she usually pray. The Quran was revealed. The messenger of Allah came and entered without permission. Rasulullah Allah revealed this verse that why is he not going to her? Why is he waiting for her to do istihara before? When Allah has already married her unto him. So that's the whole show. You are lying. It is never true. It is never what you are saying is not true. Next time, don't come out and lie again. So when the Quran was revealed, we were there when she entered upon the messenger uh, of Allah. And for the wedding feast, we offered bread and meat. So they performed the wedding and stuff like that. Then the people left. And some men stayed behind conversing in the house uh, after they had eaten. The messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out and I followed him. He started to go around all the apartments of his wife, greeting them. And they said, oh, messenger of Allah, how did you find your new wife? I do not know whether I or someone else told him that those people had left. So he went and entered the house and I entered after him. But he drew a curtain between himself and I. The ruler of hijab was revealed and exhorted the people as Allah had exhorted them. So this is the whole incident that happened. It is never what Pastor Obed was saying, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi had to hide, that he was embracing Christianity and he had to hide from people. He was hiding a lot of things from people. Even what you claim is hide is outside over here. It is, that's it. Why will you lie? 
What do Christians benefit when they lie against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam? I take it again. And when thou sayest unto him on whom Allah had conferred favor, and thou hast conferred favor, keep thy wife to thyself and fear Allah. And thou didst hide in thy mind that which Allah was to bring to light, and thou didst fear mankind. He was afraid of people. So he would say things that would please the people. The things that Allah wants to bring to light, he kept it in his mind. Why? Because of the fear of the people. Now, ma'am, another example is uh, with the story of Jesus, which was mentioned in John 7, where he says, after, Jesus, after this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the festival of Tabernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea. So that your disciples there may see the works you do. You do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. So Christ was acting in secret. A messenger of God who was acting in secret. Pay your argument. You see, ignorance will kill you Christians. Since you are doing these things, you show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe him. Therefore Jesus told them, my time is not yet here. For any time will do. Uh, uh, for you, any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that it works are evil. You go to the festival. I am not going up to the festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Your God hiding in secret. Your Jesus, your prophet, your God hiding in secret. It makes Jesus very, very dangerous. But the Quran has explained the situation with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha herself said, herself said, if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to have concealed anything that was revealed to him of the book of Allah, he would have concealed this verse. Meaning this verse itself was even insulting him. The verse was rebuking him. Eh? If he was to hide, he would have hidden it. And this also proves he wasn't the author of the Quran. If he was the author of the Quran, he wouldn't even bring these verses. Which was even rebuking him. La ilaha illallah. Hawa. He does not speak on his own self. In huwa illa wa yuha. But indeed, it is a revelation from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Your Christ went in secret and did not make him dangerous. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's marriage. Where? He kept it to himself. It is his marriage. It, that is not a command to anybody. It is his marriage. And that's, those things are not part of the Quran. But look at your ignorance. Look at you. You are disgracing your...